Hey, 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 it's Seagrove, and today I'm here with Eric Smith from The Rare Candy. Um, he's obviously been killing it on YouTube for a very long time and has made quite the brand for himself and uh, with his partners, obviously. And um, Eric, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? <laughs> uh, yeah, so my name's Eric Smith. I run the YouTube channel Rare Candy, and um, that's about it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I've been playing, I guess, for couple of years now i guess this is my second season actually going going for an invite i've been playing for a while but this past season and this season were my first i guess really trying to go for it and uh i've been playing for what feels like forever and uh just enjoying playing pokemon man so we're doing our top 10 list from the upcoming ultra prism set and we're just doing based on what we know is in the set. I'm still holding out hope for the new Solgaleo to make an appearance, but obviously we don't know that it's gonna be in there for sure. So we each made our individual sets and we're just talking about it now for the first time. Um, but we did kind of cheat in some of the same ways, like uh, grouping things together as a concept, etc. So um, we each said we have like three cards that really are definite like these are definitely have to be in the top 10 so why don't we start there um and then maybe we'll get into maybe we'll disagree there but maybe i suspect there'll be at least two out of three the same and then yeah i was thinking the same thing <laughs> okay so what were your three like these are the best three cards in the set yeah, so definitely for me, the ones that just sit above all the others right now, like I've done some testing, but I haven't tested everything. So you know, take this with a grain of salt. But right now, the ones I'm most excited about are Leafeon GX, Cynthia, and Glaceon GX. Those are, I think, the ones that, for me, like are really going to make the, the biggest impact, at least that I can see initially. So okay, uh, I'm curious how uh, close we were there. That was not close at all. I was uh, <laughs> never mind. actually really surprised. <laughs> Cynthia, I agree. Cynthia is like crazy good. Obviously, I think I think almost every deck is going to be playing three of them at least, if not four. Um, after rotation, probably four. Um, my other one was Garchomp. I actually think the Garchomp is crazy good like i kind of grouped it with lucario right. because the lucario obviously they're paired together concept but garchomp sort of the flagship and i really like the ascension attack on the both basic and stage one like i it's not ideal like hopefully you don't have to use that but that you have that at your um disposal i think is really really good but i expect that deck to be very widely played and at least tier two, I think. It's... I'll say this, based on what I've messed with the deck, I, I will agree, I think it will be a very highly played deck, but it is on, <laughs> it is in my like top 10 list, but I am not as quite as enthusiastic, but I, I do still like it though. But we can, uh, I don't know, do, do you wanna get into to that to start off with, I guess? Well, let me let me do my other one that I say is in top three. Okay. Well, um, I said the the Solgaleo Prism Star, and that might be biased because I I love Solgaleo, but that first attack is outrageous. Like one energy, and you attach as many energies um, as they have Pokemon in play. So you're looking at typically three to five energy acceleration for one energy on a 170 HP basic. That's nuts to me, especially with all the metal decks like. When I first saw that, I was like, oh, so this goes perfectly with Solgaleo. And then I thought, well, this goes in Duskmane Necrozma as well. This goes in a, basically every metal deck. Mm -hmm. Just the acceleration is nuts. I, I, it's not even a GX. It, like, it blows my mind. I think that is so, 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 so good. So so my, my three big ones are Cynthia, um, Solgaleo, Prism Star, and Garchomp, I think, are the best three. So did you have all of those in your top ten? Uh, yes, all of those are on there. Just okay. they uh, all were in my like top, top picks. But okay. but yes, I, I, I like all those cards. And yours so. were Leafeon and Glaceon. Yeah, and Cynthia. Okay, when I made my list, I, I, I started by making like every card that I thought would be in my top ten. And I ended up putting 15. Ooh. 
and then I had to cut five, and I ended up cutting Leafeon. I know that GX uh, is crazy. Uh, I know that GX is crazy. Gross. I want to wash my hands. <laughs> Just hear <laughs> I know that GX is so good, but it requires, it has to be its own deck, sort of. Like, I wanted to put it with Decidueye when I saw it. But then you have to put so many grass energy in. And then you still have to play Rare Candy for when you miss. Like, no, I'd say you don't, man. We, uh, okay. I'm going to do a quick little shameless plug. I good. put up, like, my first build of the deck on uh, the Rare Candy YouTube channel, and... I think you basically have to just like build that archetype just around the turn one Grand Bloom GX. Like sure. the whole deck needs to be based around that GX attack working on your first or second turn at the latest. The first time I ever I was testing out the deck and first time I used Grand Bloom, I felt like I was cheating. It was <laughs> it was crazy. Like I haven't had a moment like that since probably when Tapu Lele came out. So I remember when I benched Lele for the first time, I was like man this feels good like yeah. this, this is actually good card <laughs> and that's how i felt uh using grand bloom it's just such a stupid attack but hey i, I could be wrong like i've been wrong about predictions before well, but well I, I, I think that attack is ridiculous i think it's ridiculous but then you have a leafeon in play and then you still have these like other leafeons in your deck and i just don't think the ability seems so good but it has to be active and then 110 is a bit underwhelming. So to me, it's like, is the GX really worth it? I don't know. Uh, I know what you mean. Like, debatably, if you just play normal, like, the Sidui Zora arc, is it any better yeah. than that? Like, that's, I think, the question most people are going to have to ask. But uh, honestly, like, I might <laughs> say, sure. I might say so. Like, yeah, you um, can say that. That's good. I'm still, like, tweaking, like, I guess the counts of certain cards, but, like, I was playing it with the Sidui. And I've never gotten out three Decidueyes more consistently in a game than I have with, with that deck. So that was like the big thing for me. It's like, oh, this gets out Decidueyes way quicker and more consistently than normal Decidueyes or Arc. Now, I mean, the, the downside, of course, is that you have all these cards in your deck that are built to set you up to go on turn one. So you might have a little bit of late game clunk, but... I think that's why you still play things like Zora Arc, maybe, or right. maybe you still play Sycamore, even though Cynthia is out. But uh, so, I mean, I think people will definitely have to experiment with that deck. But uh, Leafeon, it's like it's not in your top three, man. You haven't tested that. Okay, I haven't you. tested it. So. <laughs> okay, um, maybe it's just fun. Maybe that's the only. To be reason. honest, yeah, it would be in my top ten. Except I really wanted to put this other card in them. It's not as okay. good. <laughs> to be honest, okay. it would be there. Okay. So do it for the memes. Do it for the I memes. I did it for the memes. I did. <laughs> and um so I think well I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and start at the bottom of my list. And this is the card that I should have Leafy on here instead, but I put this because it's awesome. I didn't even know this was a Pokemon until I saw it in this set. I thought it was Tyrantrum, but it's um Ramp Rampartos. Rampartos. Mm -hmm. 120 for a single fighting to an evolution. So it's Oko and Zorark. It's a stage two. Mm -hmm. It's a stage two, which is bad. But then the second attack is just like troll. It's three fightings to automatically KO any basic, which is too many. Like, yeah, we have Carbink Break, which you have to set up anyway. So it's like you can be accelerating while you're setting up. Um, so it's not as, cause carving breaks is not that good anymore. Uh, but yeah. it's not, it's, it's functional. Like this is the deck that if I have a friend who's wanting to get into the game and they buy a booster box of this, I'm like, okay, play Rampardos because <laughs> you just yeah, pulled like three of them or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it doesn't belong in the top 10. I just love, I love it. I love it. Oh no. I really like that card too. My, um, honestly, if you could bridge it for fossils, then it would probably be on my top 10 list. It's not on mine, but I do like the card. Um, I haven't tested it yet, so it could be good. But honestly, like the second attack like seems good, but I think the even just the first attack is great to, to attack basics because with a choice ban... In the strong, it's like 100. Yeah, so or like either you two-shot everything in the game no matter what with that card yeah. and knock out Zorark. So it's like the, the first attack is like super good and... Uh, you know, it gives up one prize, so like it's. I think it's a good card, but it just doesn't. For me, I don't think it has the right support to get your fossils out consistently, right now. But if that comes out, then I would probably jump on that card. It seems it seems good. 
Did you put it in your top 10 or no? I did not. I do like the card, though. I just think it's, like, missing something to actually be, be like, competitive right now, though. But it could be wrong. Maybe you play it with Talonflame or something set up that way. I'm not sure. Talonflame. I hate Talonflame because I used to play Greninja, and I hate Greninja for the same reason. <laughs> I did. A, I took it to a tournament one time, and I it was a five round tournament, and I played four Talonflame, three Froakie, and that's it. And I started Talonflame one time. And I was like, "Yep, I'm never playing this." I have a very. Uh, I have a, a, a relationship with Greninja, like how a lot of people do with like abusive exes. <laughs> like I'll be like, "Man, Greninja's a good deck. Why don't I ever play this?" And I sleeve it up, take it to a tournament, and it just like you regret it. Yeah, it, yeah, it completely bricks. And then afterwards, I'm like, "Oh, this is why I don't play Greninja." <laughs> but si six months goes by, and then I come crawling back like an idiot. And I'm Same. like, "Man, why don't I play Greninja?" I sold mine. <laughs> I sold mine, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that anymore. Um, so. Okay, great. So. What was your like? What was one of your lower ones? I know you didn't necessarily order them exactly. Yeah, so the rest of my list is kind of just in any order. Uh, one I will actually say is Pachirisu. Okay. Like, like an odd one. Um, I think that could definitely be a card that if you're just scrolling through the set, you could overlook. But yeah. it's actually kind of good. Um, if you guys out there aren't familiar with it, just for a lightning energy, you search your deck for a lightning energy for every Pokemon with Nuzzle that you have in play, and you attach it to those Pokemon. Uh, Pachirisu does have Nuzzle as well, that's worth mentioning. So the idea is you play the Nuzzle Pikachus in like a Raichu GX deck, right. and you kind of play it almost like Xerneas Break, where you just use your first couple turns to use this uh, this little lightning energy attack. So turn one, if you bridge it and you have four Pokemon with Nuzzle in play, you get one energy attachment for turn and another four for the attack, which is stupid for just like a little one prize <laughs> little dude like that. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you lose the buzzle. Like, you definitely lose the buzzle. <laughs> But everything else, like, it seems, it, it actually makes Raichu, I think, viable. Um, I think it's way, well, I'll say it's, it's at least, I think, way better than Magnezone or Electrode as yes. a partner for Raichu GX. I agree with that. I'm not so, sure it makes it viable. Why? How many are you playing in your list? Uh, I'm thinking three. Okay. I feel like four is unnecessary, but yeah. three seems like a sweet spot. I could be wrong, but um, it. it I don't know. It might just be like a mini card, but yeah. I like Raichu as a Pokemon. So like I was stoked Raichu GX and uh, it definitely looks like it gives that card a big boost. So, you know, sure. I thought it'd be fun to mention today. Okay. One of my uh, lower ones was Empoleon. Mm -hmm. That card, the fact that it, okay. 20 for times both players bench. So it can do up to 200 in standard. That's not even getting into expanded, um, where I think it will probably end up being. I don't know if it would probably be better in standard, honestly, because of the speed. But you have water patch or aqua patch, and you have 160 HP. The fact that it's 160 and not 150 is huge. 150 is such an easy number for so many things to hit, and 160 is so hard for so many things to hit. Um, it's also not weak to grass, which is, yeah. I think, really important. A lot of people, I think, have been neglecting that. It's lightning? Yes. And who cares? Like, it's lightning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think it's very good. Um, and it's just bulky. It hits hard. It can one-shot. It, it will probably be two-shotting most of the time, but it's not hard to power up. Um, I think it's a, solid, a really solid card. Yeah, that one's actually on my list as well. I, I really like Empoleon. I've been testing that one out a little bit. It uh, definitely feels like a very linear type of deck in terms of its strategy. But, uh, you know, in my experience, even with, like, you know, every deck right now really needs, I think, a full bench to operate at maximum capacity. So mm -hmm. assuming most players are trying to play around that, they're still going to have maybe on average three Pokemon in play. Cool. Uh, figure a Lele and then a back attacker and a support Pokemon. And even at that point, you're still with a choice band. You hit for, what is that, 190? Yeah. So that's still a really good number to hit for. And uh, Primplup actually has a good attack as well. It's like a paralysis. Well, 20 and then paralysis on a flip. So even really? if they... Yeah, Wait, so, so, is Primplup the middle one? Yeah, which is okay. slightly unfortunate. I wish it was Piplup. But, okay. um, but that can actually... It's come in handy for me to like set up those two-hit KOs even when people try to like play around you. Uh, but yeah, even still, like it's it's definitely a good card. I think you can like 
catch people off guard who aren't used to playing against something like that. For sure. And they just start bridgeting and filling up their bench. Uh, you know, if you're especially if you're playing in like a one round type of like a best of one type of tournament or something, you can just steal games from your opponent just like over benching and not knowing how to play against it, I feel like. But uh no, I, I really like the card. It's um it's fun. I, I don't think it's tier one just because it is like so linear in its strategy and right. your opponent can play around the damage output, but it's it's still good. Hundred sixty hit points, aqua patch, all the things you just said. And there's definitely no shortage of good bench sitting Pokemon in the format to fuel its attack. So right. I, I like it. I, I agree with you on that. Very cool. Um another, what's give me another one from your list. Yeah, um I guess one from the lower end I would say is Palpad. So Okay. Yeah, so I mean right now we don't really have any good way at recycling supporters other than maybe puzzle of time. I I'd say that's the only good way of getting back supporters right now. But most decks, I think, would struggle to actually make good use of Puzzle of Time. So, um, you know, decks that want to run those, like, techie supporters like Acerola right. or maybe Kukui and, and stuff like that, they can now play a Pal Pad to, you know, ensure that they can use them again if they have to stick more away or sure. something like that. So, I like Pal Pad. It's, it would definitely be, like, at towards maybe even the very bottom of my list. But, um, you know, supporter recovery is something we don't have. So I feel like it's it's worth mentioning just for that. I do think Palpad has a place in a, quite a few decks. Um, not quite a few, but in a few decks like Garchomp and things of that nature. And maybe some mill decks. But it's not... It did not make my top 10. Because because you are playing it in Garchomp, I would sort of lump it in there with like, this is part of the Garchomp engine sort of thing. Like, if that Fair makes enough. Sense. Um, so another one for me that I had on here but wasn't... It was sort of near the middle of my list was um, Blend Energy. I think Blend Unit. Energies, is that what they're called? Unit Energy? Unit Energy, yes. That's all mine too. That's the like fire, grass, water, and then the other one is, is it Psychic Psych Metal Lightning? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> I think it definitely has a lot of uses. Um Especially in expanded, I think there's just more options. Not necessarily that it would be better in expanded again, but um, the ability to just move things around, I think, is really good. I'm thinking of like fairy transfer, but obviously I wouldn't work with this. But I guess if you could use Lenala GX, I think that card is awful, but <laughs> um, you could use it for something like this. So I don't know. I, I think the cards are interesting, and while they may not make a huge impact immediately, I do think they will make an impact in the meta um as it grows and continues to develop yeah i'm i'm in the same boat there like it would definitely be on the lower end of my list for sure just because like it doesn't i don't think it has an immediate like broken use but just like blend energy blend energy has seen play uh it still sees play and expanded and like some goliopod variants so i i feel okay. like you energy is kind of in the same boat and it offers some different type combinations that blend energy offers so it gives you okay. just more different deck building options uh, if maybe blend energy and expanded doesn't cover the types that you need exactly, you energy gives you some other options. So, uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I feel the same way about that one. Okay. Um, another one is Dawn Wings Necrozma, and I put that because it's like Keldeo with a good GX attack. Um, <laughs> And Keldeo yeah. was really good, and so like a useful uh, attacking Kel. I mean, you can attack with Keldeo, obviously, in certain decks, but uh, I think it has a lot of... I mean, it's very, a pretty universal card, and then it'll even be an attacker, or a secondary attacker, at least, in, in um, some decks. So I included that. I think it's gonna, you're going to see an expanded um, as a Keldeo replacement for most decks because of the higher HP. I think it has 10 higher HP than Keldeo. I believe so. Um, so as long as you're not running a Hoopa deck, yeah. Um, okay, so I did not put that card on my list. In the set review, I did I did like talk highly of it, and I actually do like it. I think it's a card a lot of people are like really sleeping on. They're saying, oh, it's weak to dark, so that makes it unplayable. But like I even mentioned this in my set review, like even back when Keldeo, you know, was seeing play like VG was or Verizian Genesect was like one of the best decks in the format. And Keldeo still saw play in a format with that deck being very popular. So the fact that it's weak to dark, yeah, it's not good that that's weak to dark. But I don't think that makes the card automatically bad, especially right. since it's just a bench sitter. Most of the time, it's not really going to be in the active spot. Uh, 
but yeah, I think people are definitely sleeping on how good that ability is. It didn't make my top ten, and uh, but I I would I wouldn't argue if you wanted that on your top ten. Like I I do think it's a good card, and uh, you never know if Zorark becomes bad right. somehow. <laughs> maybe it can be a good attacker because its attacks are actually good. It's just yeah. its positioning in the meta game is really horrible. Right, um, I agree. That, that that's really the reason I didn't put it on my list, but I I really like the card, okay. and like I said, I think people are sleeping on it. Okay, yeah, that's a good point about. I forgot about the weakness, honestly, when I was making the list. But Zorark is obviously great, uh, amazing, but I do think it will see fluctuations in play um, as the meta game develops. Like it'll be big, and then small, and then big, and then small. But it's always going to be there. It's just so good. Okay, so what was another one from your list? Yeah, um, I think we've overlapped on a lot of these. I have Sugway of Prism Star, which I think you've talked about. I mean, card's good, gives metal uh, some good alternate energy acceleration. Uh, Duskmane Necrozma GX is on my list. I don't think we've talked about that one yet. Definitely on mine as well, yeah. So that one's um, it's pretty good for you guys who are unaware. Three metal on a color list is 220. You discard three energy, which is good because you knock out everything in the format other than like Decidueye. So. Uh, it's good. Has a good GX move. Three metal to do 250 if you're behind on prizes. So good GX move as well. You can do 250, then not have to get rid of any resources and do 220 the next turn. And there's just a ton of metal energy support. There's the new Magnazone. There's the new Solgleo Prism Star, which you know we've already talked about a little bit. Registeel, Max Elixir. So I think a card just has a lot of things going for it. And, uh, you know, I don't know the exact partner for it off the top of my head because I do think there's a couple ways you can build a deck revolving around that card, but it just hits so ridiculously hard. <laughs> it does. And, like, I don't know, it seems good. <laughs> to me, know. it's Magnazone, and I almost wanted to put Magnazone in my top 10, but I just sort of lumped them together as a concept. Like, sure. Um, the Cosmo is going to, what the deck is going to be called, uh, or Duskmane or whatever, or, yeah, Duskmane or whatever, but. Um, with Mount Siakal, I just I know that's not what it's called. Mount Cor Coronet, Coron yeah, Coronet, and Magnazone. I think it's a really really strong concept, but we'll see where it goes. Uh, I'm kind of curious to talk about like because uh, you seem more enthusiastic about it than I do. I'd I'd like to kind of like talk about Garchomp and Lucario. Oh, okay. Just I had a friend send me a list, and in his list he was like, I'm thinking about adding a third Lele. What do you think? And I was like, why? Put yeah. in more <laughs> Lucarios. <laughs> like, because mm -hmm. once it's sort of like Solgaleo to me, and I really like Solgaleo, but with Solgaleo, you have to hit the Soul Burst as early as possible. It thins your deck when you do that, and then you're powered up and you're ready to go. And with Lucario, or with Garchomp, once you get a Garchomp up, you're set. You should basically be getting up guard chomps via Lucario's and find exactly what you need all the time. Just any deck where you can get whatever you want whenever you want it is crazy good. Mm -hmm. It's like a Mallow trade every turn. Oh, yeah. Like, I've, I've already tested the deck a little bit, and the mid game on it the is. The mid game is disgusting. It's, it's stupid. Um, <laughs> the I early game's tough. Mm hmm. But I, I haven't seen your list, but the one I have is playing Puzzles of Time. So when you have two Lucario in play, you effectively can get any yeah. card out of any two cards out of your deck or discard at any given time, which yeah. is I'm playing stupid. puzzles as well. Um, it's stupid. I haven't, good, I haven't but, put my list up yet, but uh, still working on it. But um, I will have one up. It's <laughs> it's crazy. I it's, I expect it to be. Tier one or tier two? I I want to say tier one, but I'm a little bit hesitant just because getting the early game ironed out has been tough. I'm I'm not quite as sold on it. Like it has like it's really stupid good moments, but like when I when I've been like testing around with it, the fact that it needs two attachments yeah. is like it doesn't seem like a big deal, but I feel like it, it kind of is. Yeah, it is. Especially you with, can like, play all... the other Garchomp. Yes, and I do have that in my list as well, okay. but it's just like um, I feel like it struggles to keep up with the tempo of certain games, especially if any deck plays E-Hammer, which a lot of top decks right now are. I feel like that really, really hurts it. Like, 
even against decks that don't play E-Hammer, I found just getting the two attachments to stream Garchomp's every turn can be a little bit tough. Okay. And so that's like... And so, okay. So another problem I have with the deck, too, is I want to use the Ascension Gibble, but I also want to preserve my energy in play. So I've been running the the free retreat one when it has an energy on it or yeah. whatever. Yep. And so I'd rather use Ascension and get stuff out quicker, but that puts your energy in harm's way. Yeah. So it it's... I don't know. It, like you're saying, the early game is where it kind of struggles. If you can, I think, get a a, a powered up Garchomp safely and take a knockout, then like as long as you have one extra energy in play at all times, you're okay. Because then you can set up a freshman on your next turn. But it just uh because of the two attachments that has really made I think awkward for the deck to, um, I guess consistently keep going throughout the course of a game. But I don't know. I, I do need to it, test it more. It's not. I mean, I haven't tested. I've just been like thinking sure. about it. So no, I definitely like the concept for it. I, I really enjoy the archetype. And like you're saying, like the mid game is stupid. Once you get Lucario's in play and start doing stuff, it's just like, oh my god, this deck, this deck is wild. But uh, I'm just not sold if it's gonna like be, if it's gonna have like a huge impact initially. I feel like the current meta game is a little bit hostile towards it. The fact that Garchomp is Dragon Two really is annoying. Because if you were fighting, you could abuse fighting support and also hit Zorark for weakness. And the fighting Garchomp can't really knock out Zorark in one hit, not that easily. So, like, it's just a couple of little small things, I think, add up to make it not quite tier one. But I, I could be wrong. Like, it has so many good things going for it, like you've done a good job at pointing out. But, like, me, I'm just like, eh. I'm, like, right there on the edge of thinking it's good or not but it is on my top 10 list because it is okay. i mean the combo is definitely strong but i'm probably overhyping it but it just seems like the whole i love the archetype i love it mm -hmm. i think it's great i'm i was hoping to see, it, sometimes i hate and sometimes i love i go back and forth i think i haven't seen a good one in a while so i like it where they're like where you see cards that say things such as this if this Pokemon or if this trainer was used it's very specific like this only helps in this certain Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like that and sometimes I hate that, but I haven't seen a good one in so long that I was excited to see it here. Oh, definitely. So, um, the other one, I think there's only one I have left, and that's Luxray line. Oh, yeah. I completely forgot to... Okay, I'm bumping something off and putting <laughs> Luxio on there. I knew I was forgetting something. So we're going to, like, kick Palpad to the curb on my list. <laughs> okay. So just to pretend I didn't say that, and we're going to talk about Luxio instead. Luxio, okay. Or Lux Ray, the whole evolution line. Yeah, the whole matters. line is good. Um, that ability on the Lux Ray. I don't know what they're called. I, I know Lux Ray because of, of hearing people talk about Lux Chomp. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what the little ones are called, but they're the ability Shinx. Shinx. Okay, when I first saw Shinx, I thought it was absolutely broken. I thought it was. I'm not convinced of the um, translation on that, by the way. But I, I originally read it as, unless it is your first turn, search your deck for a whatever Luxio and evolve it. Oh, that I was would be like, stupid. Good. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like. It's so um, good, but um, it doesn't say that. But the translation that it says now is something like: If you, it's your second turn, you can evolve. Or like, if it's your first turn, but you went second, you can evolve immediately into Luxio. It, it said, if it is your s second turn, and you played this Pokemon this turn. Is if it's your first turn going second, and you played this Pokemon this turn, then you can evolve it, which made it sound to me like you can't start it and evolve it. Oh, so, um, um, that's the that's how I understood the translation. I don't think that's yeah. right. Well, I feel like as long as it was just in play or whatever, like, yeah. but yeah, like you said, we'll have to wait for the official like English translation on that one. But you know, I think, I mean, that's the general idea, though. You know. Yeah. Your first turn going second, you can evolve immediately. That's yeah. the general gist, though. And Luxio is disgusting. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you talk about that? Okay, so Luxio, it's um, 80 hit points for a single colorless energy, 30 damage. They can't play items. So Quaking Punch on a one prize uh, little Pokemon. Uh, is weak to fighting, though. That yes. is 
awful. You, pro- you probably lose the buzzwall. Yeah. You probably do. Yeah. But against a lot of other things, it's not too bad. But the reason it's like half decent is because if you evolve into Luxray, you can use uh, Shining Celebi to copy uh, Luxio's attack and kind of tank hits with yes. Luxray, which has 150 hit points, free retreat, which is good. And has an ability where it reduces damage done to it by 30. Yeah, so you, that's nuts. 180 hit point, uh, like one prize toad, basically. Yes, and you can play... I'm not saying you should, but you can play weakness policy in the deck. Because you, you turn off items, so they can't feel blower it. That's true, too. That's actually a really good point. So there's no way for them to get rid of it unless they're able to stop you. But you have free retreat on, on your attacker, and so... Yeah, I don't... I think it's an amazing. It might be the best deck coming out of this. I'm not. I'm not ready to say that definitively yet. No. So I'm actually, as we're like filming this, I have my proxies printed out for that deck. I'm about to start uh, messing with it. Um, I'm really curious to see how it does, but I am skeptical of a few things, which kind of kept it from being, you know, in my top several cards. I sure. think from the set. My overall biggest like gripe with it, it's basically it requires a lot more moving pieces. To basically just get out a one prize toad, right. essentially. Uh, I mean, it definitely has like perks over seismic toad because you only give it one prize. You only need one energy attachment as right. opposed to a DCE, so you can play basic energies if you need to. Um, so it definitely has good things going for it. Also, if you play against something that shuts off abilities and you can't use Shining Celebi, then your deck suddenly gets a lot worse. So right. It has, I think, some some caveats there, and uh, the other gripe I. I, I kind of see with it in standard, there's not really a great way to dig on your first turn of the game. Uh, so we don't have something like Shaman. So if you do go second, getting out a Shinx, a Luxio, and the energy might be a little tough, too. It, it's hard to say. Also, Luxio is kind of frail, only 80 hit points. So it could just get return KO'd on your opponent's next turn, leaving you without an attacker. So that's like, it's kind of like Garchomp, I think, in that way, where it has kind of a sketchy early game. But if you do manage to get past your first couple turns, the deck seems really strong. So those are my hesitations for it. But overall, I really like the idea of it. Same. Yeah, and, it does have a few issues, but I think it's really, really good. I'm looking forward to testing it as well. Um, and I think it's one of the stronger concepts in the thing. I, I, I had it about uh, fifth on my list, so... It's good, not amazing. Yes, I had Glaceon GX. Oh, Glaceon. I have Glaceon on my list. I just looked right <laughs> past it. <laughs> yeah, definitely an important card, card yeah. to cover. Solid. I'm, uh, I'm getting jumped by my son here, so I think he might oh. just be in it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Glaceon. Uh, I noticed it wasn't in, like, your top, top cards from the set. I- I'm curious why It was my is. fourth. Um, oh, it's still good, though. Yeah. And the, I think it's overrated because I think a lot of people are trying to play it by itself and then are just trying to... But then if you're playing it by itself, 50% of the time it doesn't work um, to show off Lele, which is like the main, the best part of it. Maybe not the best part, but a very good part of it um, because you're going second. And then... Of the times you're going second, it doesn't matter if they shut off Lele, let's say, 60% of the time. Or 30% of the time. So, overall, it's not... It, I, I, it's very good. I don't. I think people are overrating it because they're thinking it's this, its own deck. And I think it's strong in other ways. No, I'll, I'll let you talk about the strengths because I think you like it more than I do. I think it's both of its attacks are excellent and its ability is excellent, but I think it's overrated. I, that's a fair assumption. I, I, I mean, I see people talking about it all the time, and um, I guess for me, I could definitely see this card being kind of like Garbodor, where I remember when uh, Trash Ranch came out, and a lot of people had yet to really adapt their decks to a format with Trash Ranch, and you know. I'm sure most of us remember like Seattle. I think it was Seattle regionals where all of day two almost was, it seemed like Drampa Garboder. Uh, that was like one of those first right. early uh, Guardians Rising legal tournaments. And I feel like Glaceon has the potential to do something like that. Like if you're not prepared for this thing, this is actually a card that I would be considering taking to 
maybe one of the first Ultra Prism legal tournaments because I think you could potentially win a lot of games just from your opponent's like lack of preparedness mm -hmm. for a format with Glaceon. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think for me, what I like about it most, like right out the gate. But um, I forgot it, to mention the other big weakness is its weakness. Yes. Which right out of the gate, a lot of people are going to be playing metal, I think. Doug Trio coming through. Hey, Doug Trio <laughs> does beat Glaceon, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty positive it beats Glaceon. Well, well, it's hard to say because it can pick off like. Yeah, Diglett but you're getting stuff. like. Yeah, I don't know. But that's, that's what I don't think it's. I don't I think, think it's beating. Uh, most metal decks. Maybe. Doug, I don't think it beats Doug Trio. And I. Don't think that matters because I don't think Doug Trio is going to be anywhere out of the bottom tables. But... I would actually say I think you beat Metagross. I I think that, but like you probably don't beat the yeah because you shut off Metagross. But like the uh, Magnusum variants or like Registeel based ones, like I think you you probably lose to that. But yeah, there's just so much with Dusk, uh, Main Necrozma. You can play that in um, Metagross now. That can be the new attacker in Metagross. I forgot to mention that as a way of playing it. But anyways. Um, I just think there's too much metal coming in. That's another reason I didn't have my top three, but it was my fourth pick. Gotcha. So. It's um no, it, it's really good. I haven't I haven't tested it yet, so I guess I shouldn't say it's really good. But I'm about to start testing it. It just seems really powerful on paper. And like I said, I think what has me most excited about is the potential to like maybe steal some like uh, of the early tournaments of the Ultra Prism format with just people's lack of preparedness for the card, but. Um, I like it in a couple decks right now, just like on paper. Yeah. I think the big one is I think Nine Tails just changes to be like this like water Whoa. fox <laughs> deck basically. Yeah. I feel like Nine Tails or Lola Nine Tails GX as a deck has lacked like a great early game attacker. Typically, you play Tapu Coco, but I feel like that deck just kind of like changes to include Glaceon, where Glaceon's your early game Pokemon that you lead the game with, and then you clean up with Nine Tails right. instead of going all in with just Nine Tails. So. That seems like initially, like without practicing much, like that seems like one of the better ways to play it. But, uh, you know, once that Solgaleo GX promo comes out, this card's probably bad. Yes. Like, probably. I think Solgaleo is going to change the format significantly. Yeah. I'm still pulling for it to be in this set. I really hope it, it just makes it, sneaks in the set um, as one of, <laughs> as in the, like, the alternate art, the nicer arts. But we'll see. Um, and that is my top 10. I'm pretty sure we've hit everything in my top 10 now. But did yeah, you have I, any? I think same. No, I think same for me. We had a lot of overlap, so uh, we've covered everything for me, too. Okay. Sorry about this distracting boy running around with no shirt on. <laughs> um, are there any shout outs or anything you want to give? Uh, yeah, um, just a couple cheap, uh, shameless plugs. Check out my YouTube channel, Rare Candy. Uh, Awesome on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Patreon, all at Rare Candy TCG. So definitely go check us out over there. We post a ton. And actually, if you guys want to see some Ultra Prism decks in action, I've actually been doing a decent job of getting a lot of the new sure. archetypes up on my channel. So, and not just um, the videos of like actually you're actually testing them against each yes. other and and everything. It's really good. Uh, definitely think Rare Candy is one of the top five YouTubes out there for Pokemon. So. Thank you. You're doing good work. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and have a good day.